A lot of the zoos devoted to African species. It was a favorite of my father's. It's a favorite of mine. But we have animals from all over the world, but uh, about a third of the zoo focuses on African species. So here you're going to see Red River hogs. It's one of uh, about four swine species comes from Africa. Uh, they're very rare in zoos. Only about 24 zoos in the country have them. Uh, we have three males here, about 150 pound animals. They're, they're unique because they have a, they're a nice rust color, white on the face, tassels on the ears. They're very dramatic looking. They're pretty. They're pretty for a pig, I'll just say that. Right next door to them are their natives, uh, neighbors, the um, African crested porcupines. They can weigh up to 40, 60 pounds. And they're, they're a rodent, a very dangerous rodent, because they can have quills anywhere from 6 to 18 inches long. And the porcupines, we, they're a nocturnal animal, but they like to rest. In the wild, they go in like a, an abandoned aardvark hole, dig their own hole, find part of an old rotten tree. So we've kind of recreated those elements where they can rest, feel secure, but our guests can look through glass and still see the porcupines at rest. As you go past the crested porcupines, uh, you'll encounter what we call the African oasis. And in that, we have multiple antelope species. It's called a mixed exhibit. So we have the diminutive Dorcas gazelles, a bit larger, the impala, and then the big guys are the kudu. Uh, kudu are almost as big as almost as big as a North American elk. They can go five, six hundred pounds. Past the African oasis, we have our new exhibit. It's outstanding. It's called Leopard Rock. And in that, you'll see, uh, depends on which day you come, we have four animals that rotate. You'll either see two spotted leopards or a black and a spotted leopard. And what that represents is the 12-year-old parents or their nine-year-old offspring. And it's unique because we, we, we feel zoos are in the position of telling stories. And the story with this exhibit is, is that we talk about the copy, which is spelled K-O-P-J-E. The copy is an eruption of granite basalt out of the Earth's crust, and they form these piles of rock. And a copy can be the size of a boulder. Uh, for viewer's reference, a copy can be Stone Mountain in Georgia, could be Ayers Rock in Australia. Those are also copies, so they provide a, a habitat for wild animals, and it's a place to hunt, hide, have your cubs, so we, we've actually recreated a copy inside Leopard Rock. That's why we call it Leopard Rock, because of this recreation. And it's a, it's a way of learning about how leopards might use these in the wild. Our zebra exhibit, which we have two species of zebra. We have basically the South African variety, which is the Damara zebra. And you can tell those because of they have a shadow stripe. It's actually a almost a cinnamon colored stripe between the black stripe. And then we have the more familiar Grant zebra where you see these um, dramatic videos of, of the migrations with zebra and wildebeest and gazelles. That's, that's the iconic zebra for those migrations is the Grant zebra. The primate cruise is probably one of our number one attractions here along with the shows. About 80 plus percent of our guests will, will take that boat ride. It's a 20 minute guided boat ride based on encountering and learning about the world's primates. So we have multiple islands, 10 islands, about 12 species of animals, and 30 some animals all together. So several species of lemur, several types of monkeys, the lesser apes, the gibbons, the siamangs, and we feel it's one of the more natural habitats uh, where you'll encounter primates here in North America. And what's interesting is they, they don't, there's no cages, there's no bars, no fence, no glass, they're out there on these islands, which is a great way for these types of animals to live because in certain situations, primates are very intelligent animals. Um, they can become bored, they can become stressed in the wrong environment. Uh, to prove, I, I think the, the, the best basis for proof of how well this exhibit works, we had to return a survey that was generated by a, a university in the 90s that said, you know, they're looking for stressors in captive primates and honestly we had to send that back to them blank sorry we can't fill us out not that we don't want to our primates don't exhibit any of these negative tendencies because they're in this great habitat they're out in the open they get to experience rain sun barometric changes they've got real grass they've got trees they can experience it's the visually stunning because their enrichment is not only their habitat themselves and the way that we set up these habitats but it's it's not like some facilities where the animal doesn't see anything be, beyond its own exhibit there's so much for these animals to see out there that that in itself is is enriching is is great for that animal